Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Let's be real. Sleeping with your teacher is hot. Just be careful if you're homeschooled. Mom, stop it. Now back to the Alan Cox Show on 100.7. WMMS. So you ended up sleeping through this show last night, didn't you? Were you going to go to Robert Zomber? I was was going to go see him. I wanted to see him, but I was not feeling up to it. I was kind of surprised. The write-up in The Plain Dealer on the show last night, it was the uh, Freaks on Tour tour or whatever it's called. It's Freaks on Parade is what it is. And Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper are the headliners. Uh, but also ministry and filter. And there was no mention of Bay Village native uh, Rich Patrick and his band Filter. I mean, first of all, hot take, ministry is better than Rob Zombie. Uh, and I like Rob Zombie, but ministry is still better. Alice Cooper, he's in the Rock Hall. He's a legend, the whole thing. But it's on a crazy show from what I was told by Alice my Alice Cooper's great. Way. Yeah. Yes. The guy's friggin' 77 years old. Throw a microphone stand through a... <laughs> The stage hand and stuff. Like right. All sorts of crazy. Yeah, he's the Antics. king of shock rock. Yeah. Um, but I was just kind of surprised in the write up. It was all, it was this big long anecdote about some grandmother who bought her kids, grandkids tickets or whatever. It was fine. I was just like, you know, Rich Patrick's from Bay Village, for God's sake. They were here last summer for Buzzard Fest. Mm-hmm. Filter's awesome. Love those guys. But uh, I thought that that was uh, an egregious omission. In the uh, in the write up on the show, but I just remembered you were like saying you were going to go to Robert Zombert. I was very excited about it. Yeah, very, but I just was not up to it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Hell no, to drag yeah. ass out to Blossom. No, no way. Mm. I had a big group of friends, as you know. I roll deep these days. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Uh, Guardians will play tomorrow night, not tonight. I misspoke earlier because I forgot what day it was. The Guardians will play tomorrow night <sighs> against the uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates, the, the, who are my National League team. Um, Guardians, Pirates, tomorrow night on uh, the buzzard. 7-10 will start off, and then they'll play Saturday and Sunday before the Guardians hit the road and play the Royals in Kansas City. And hopefully they will have better luck with them there than they did here. They played them four games, and they just avoided the sweep with uh, coming from behind with that last one. So uh, Guardians tomorrow night from Progressive Field against the Pirates. And um, your promo code will change this weekend, too, if you're going to do... Some shopping over there at CLA Clothing Company. You'll go from Lake, which is the August word, to Guardian, which is the September word. So today, tomorrow, and Saturday, you can continue to use uh, Lake for 20% off. Saturday night, of course, we do a metal show here on the buzzer that will be after the Guardians game. Should start at 10 o'clock. Sometimes the games, if it's like a 7.30 game, will push it. But I think it's a 6 o'clock game Saturday, so we should start right on time. It's called Two Hours to Midnight. And if you're into metal, I mean heavy, heavy stuff. This is not like, you know, oh, hey, poison. That's not what I'm talking about. You like that kind of stuff, you know, Stansbury does uh, Big Hair Wednesday. And then uh, Corey does Hair of the Dog. Yes. On uh, Sunday, Sunday morning. morning after the Week in Cots. Yeah. So kind of a glam thing. That's mm-hmm. his area of expertise. Uh, but Corey Roddick contains multitudes. And so he is one of my co-hosts on Two Hours to Midnight. And then uh, Patrick Butler as well. And so it's two hours of uh, hard, hard, heavy metal on Saturday night. Your requests and local bands and throwbacks and brand new stuff. I got some real skull crushers lined up for you Saturday night. Pat Butler is actually really good at fantasy football, too. He contains multitudes in that way. Did he win? Uh, Was there an office pool? He He did. Yeah, he won last year. Mm -hmm. I, I I had the best regular season record. And then lost in the playoffs. Yep. Uh, and Pat Butler took 
took it all home. What was the pot? Uh, it's like seven hundred bucks. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's it's a lot. Like I got my money back, or like I maybe I won like two hundred dollars or something like that because I had the best regular season record. But it's a hundred dollar buy in. Mm-hmm. So uh, you okay, wanna hear, you want know, you want to hear my uh, team name? It's very Cleveland. Yes, Sherwin William. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's painting the town red, Mary. I see that. He's getting out. Yeah. Yesterday, he's painting the garage green. It's a band called Harriet. That's a gal singing, Mary. Just a little gal. A lady. It's a tiny little slip of a lass. A little tiny lady singing for this band. Oh, I think he just moved. I'll play those guys on Saturday and a lot of other good stuff, too. Mary, I'm playing a band called Teeth. Perfect. Right? As in their music will knock yours out. How do you like that? I like my teeth. I heard, yeah, you put so much work into them. I just got them right, you know? Yeah. I got an email from Melanie there in Parma Heights. She said you guys were talking about um, lunch ladies the other day. There was a school district that was sending all of the kids home before noon because they didn't have enough people to work the cafeteria for lunches. That was the only reason they were sending everybody home. So it screw up the bus schedules, all this other stuff. But they were so understaffed that on multiple days, I don't even know how you rectify that situation. I guess maybe you deputize people to work uh, lunches or whatever. But Melanie said she went to Catholic school and her mom was a lunch lady. And when she wasn't serving food, she was kind of helping on the playground wrangling kids. And she said in one day, this was when she was in the second grade, she and for, a friend. For people always being so like, hey, we need the kids are our future. We we love kids. We want to take care of kids. Nobody seems to want to work with kids. No, of <laughs> course not. No, they want somebody else to take yeah. care of their children. That's the complaint with most teachers is they're like, we're glorified babysitters because mm-hmm. parents don't want to do anything. There was a girl that went viral on TikTok because everybody was arguing over her take that she wanted nothing to do with meeting her kids' teachers. She's like, I will, uh, you know, if they have events, I will donate money for that, uh, but I don't need to go to a PTA meeting. I don't want to meet these teachers as long as my kids are learning things and they're, you know, and, of course, everybody was arguing over that. But Melanie said when her mom wasn't uh, acting as the lunch lady, she was wrangling kids on the playground, and in the second grade, Melanie and friend got into some kind of disagreement. And uh, I gave her the double bird because I thought when you gave someone the finger, you were saying, I swear it's true. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know how yeah. she I don't know how she got to that. Maybe somebody else told her and they were trolling her in the second grade. And of course, this other girl said, I'm telling your mom because her mom is right there. Playground wrangling. And she said, boy, did I get into trouble? So it always, um, you know, she's like, I was just trying to let her know that I didn't mean to hurt her feelings, but, of course, I made it far, far worse by flipping the double birds. And um, so just as a um, uh, an, as an indicator of uh, I think it still holds true, although it is funny in movies and TV shows when a kid flips somebody off. I don't know why that's funny because it is crude and vulgar, but when a little kid does it, like a little kid, it's a good sight gag. Yeah. But that's it's also, w- like, a very dated gag, too. I know, but still. <laughs> I mean, you know. I think it's funny. Yeah, yeah no, it, holds, it's, it holds up. But, I mean, like, not in that, like, it's not funny, but it just it's something that you would see all the time in, like, an 80s movie yes. or a 90s movie. I don't feel like I've seen that in a modern movie in a long well, time. Well, no, these days it yeah. gets memed to death. Yeah. John Cena, people are kind of applauding him because he has made it very clear that he doesn't want children. Because he wants to live his life the way he wants. And he's basically along the lines of, I would not be able to devote the time to raise children properly. Which is a very candid way to look at it, you know. I never understood this notion that people shouldn't be selfish. There are a lot of people with kids who are selfish. And so this thing where it's like, it's selfish. A lot of people have kids for selfish reasons. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. There's a whole spectrum, yeah. right? So, for, like, John Cena got married. I don't think he's been married long. Got married a few years ago, and his wife is crazy hot. She's, like, Egyptian or something. I don't know. And uh, he's like, 
I'm very curious about life, and that requires a lot of investment in your time, and I'm very driven in my career, and, you know, and he's like, but I will never have the time to invest to be a great parent. And obviously some people are going to come for you. There's this whole, like, you must have children industrial complex, right? Like your move, J.D. Vance. This guy's out there like childless cat ladies, and everybody's familiar with that already by now. But and it's always so weird, too, that J.D. Vance never mentions guys who don't want kids. Here's a guy who doesn't want kids. Guys like J.D. Vance never mention guys who don't want kids because it's not really about kids. It's about contempt for women. That's what it is. It's got nothing to do with children. There are plenty of guys who don't want kids. So you got all these edgelord dweebs like J.D. Vance and uh, who's the football guy? Uh, Harrison, uh, Harrison Butker, Butker. Who can't fathom that women might have other greater goals yeah. for themselves than pumping out a cabbage every nine months. So John Cena says, uh, it's not for me. It requires a lot of time and a lot of energy, and I don't want to devote it to that. And I'm sure parenthetically he's like, and I like to keep my money. Right. <laughs> I make a lot of money. I would like to keep all of it. Well, he doesn't want to have to say to his kid, you can't see me. Right. <laughs> Is that his thing? <laughs> yeah. Where he puts the hand yeah. in front of his face? Yes. <laughs> so what did that mean? Like, you can't see me. What did that mean? I don't know. I, <laughs> but I, I mean, I didn't watch then, uh, but it is kind of like, I don't know, you can't touch me kind of thing. But he didn't say you can't level. touch me. I he know, was I, implying they couldn't see I, him. You can't see me coming. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't know what it means. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what the upside of him pretending to be invisible was. Right? Strong. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. visible, actually. He stands out quite a right. bit. Right. You see so big. To say, you'll never see me coming. Yeah. That's one thing. But to say, you can't see me. You yeah. are unable. You'll have to ask somebody else. You are blind. Yeah. Yes, you know. are unable to ascertain my whereabouts. I don't know the origins or the meaning exactly behind that. Okay. Well, maybe somebody who's uh, way into wrestling. I think, by the way, that John Cena is going to emerge as the greatest wrestler turned actor. People not, thought it, people thought it was The, the Rock. Rock. Yeah. No, people thought it was The Rock, but he's... The Rock didn't have a lot of range. He uh, Back in the day when he would do SNL, when he was kind of first dipping his toe into that, people were like, oh, my God, this guy's funny. He's huge. you know. But as he has kind of had to do less and less work along the way, he's like, I'll just do this thing. I still like him a lot. I, you know, Years ago, I said he should be in every movie. But I think John Cena is a guy, you know, he'll eventually do a drama, and he'll probably be pretty, I don't know if he already has, but uh, he's been doing a lot of comedy. But somebody will eventually put John Cena in something, and he'll be real good. Like on a couple of occasions when they put dice in a drama. He's good in Blue those. Valentine yeah. or one of those movies. Yeah, he's real good. Leslie sent you an article about some some kids or some, a Texas couple. couple yeah, that, we yeah. talked about it yesterday. Okay. Yesterday, yesterday yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. You were too busy out puking, yeah. Bill. It's just big time in us, you know. This the dog and the uh, that one? Yeah. The lady with the dog? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts? Uh, gross. <laughs> it's pretty gross. Yeah, that uh, is a hot ew. take. Also, yeah. ew. It was also ew and gross and yuck and uh, I don't, I, I don't like it. Uh, the recap was there was a couple in Texas who the husband was under investigation or he had been arrested for exposing himself or he was walking around a grocery store playing with himself, something like that. And they they uh, confiscated his phone so that they could ascertain the, you know, what kind of pictures and what kind of videos he had. Confiscated. And um, that's when they found videos of the wife banging their Great Dane, which is one of the largest breeds of dog. And they were like, oh, we've got a whole other situation on our hands here. And this couple had two children. They had an 18-year-old and a 10-year-old who were sent off to live with relatives. And I have to assume will eventually change their names because uh, there's no coming back from that. Yeah, rut row. Rut row, indeed. <laughs> um, Connor, our phone screener, he has sent me the explanation of the you can't see me. Mm. 
You gonna share it with us? Yeah, I'm kind of. Well, it's a it's a, it's a whole that. it's a whole no no it's a whole think piece. I'm yeah. trying to figure out what the um you <laughs> an iconic. Well, it says explained, but I'm like I don't I don't know how any of this explains it, but uh, but whatever. I don't know. It's you can't. It sense. started. Yeah. Oh, the meme explained. Well, yeah, I know the meme. It's from the wrestling thing, but I, I just don't understand. You know, because the Undertaker had what? Rest in peace. Yeah. Like you're dead. Yeah. And uh, the Rock uh, was always. Uh, I guess he did. A lot, he cooking. did a lot of work in the kitchen, so yeah, he was yeah. always uh, asking about people's culinary skills. Mm. And well, he was asking uh, about if they can smell his. I'm sorry. His cooking. He was the one cooking. He wasn't asking. He, he wasn't. What are you cooking? He wasn't asking. What that. your neighbors <laughs> are cooking? <laughs> Right. It smells like curry in everyone's apartment building. Yeah, The Rock and Stone Cold had some great catchphrases. And that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Well, Can't I just, I, I, my favorite line from him was when he'd run out, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and he'd go, 316. <laughs> hey, Jana. Hi. Hi, what's up? So, yeah, so I actually, the, John Cena did an interview and he said why or how he came up with the You Can't See Me. He said that in his early career that pretty much he was walking down the street and some guy came up to him and said he had a joke for him. And he showed him that You Can't See Me and then he started, he's like, I dare you to do it on your next show. And he did it. And then that was the thing. And he never stopped doing it from then. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Yeah. So it was a dare from a stranger on the street? Yeah. If you look it up, like, John Cena has a whole interview on it where he said how he did it. Okay. Sounds. uh, Thank you, Janice. Sounds like maybe he was trolling the interviewer. This says that um, his brother dared him to do it. John Cena would hold his hand in front of his... stranger until that moment. (laughs) (laughs) we, We just met. Yeah. Yeah, you can't see me indicating his opponent couldn't see him because he was better than them uh. you can't see me your eyes aren't good enough <laughs> to take in <laughs> the, the way that the light and the colors are refracting off of your rods and cones hmm. all right well there you, you go. just said that you yeah why didn't some... he say that rods and cones son <laughs> you dork but then you get all the optometrists and ophthalmologists yelling at you yeah. And you don't want to get on their bad side, boy. If you know an optometrist, boy, they do really good work. But you know how they say that the windows are the eyes to the soul? The eye- you know how no. they say the, yeah, windows, the windows are the eyes to the yeah. soul? Maybe today's Friday. You know how Who they knows? say that the eyes are the windows to the soul? I've don't heard, say yeah. that to an optometrist. If you had to buy windows that are eyes to your soul, where would you do that? Uh, window Nation. Right? Yeah, I thought so. You, you know, I hate when people ask questions they already know the answer to. <laughs> just, just... Throwing it out there. <laughs> they always say that the uh, mouth is the cabinet to the kitchen uh, of the body. Yeah, so of the body the, of the soul. <laughs> oh, Northeast Factory. The, the <laughs> mouthy cabinet of the body yeah, of the kitchen. Yeah. Yes. The mouth is the kitchen cabinet mm-hmm. of the body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, John Cena doesn't want kids, and some people are mad about that, but I applaud him. I love my children, of course, but people who choose not to have them, uh, I salute you. Because it flies in the face of convention, by the way. It flies in the face of the biological imperative. You are saying to nature itself, nope, that's not what I'm here for. We haven't evolved over hundreds of thousands of years just to be um, laid low by the same impulses that got us all here in the first place. We've got enough people. Climate change notwithstanding, we've got enough people. And people go, what if everybody thought like that? There's no scenario in which every person would think that way, ever. So the people who do think that way, oh, come on, say it. They're the best among us. Hmm. There you go. Children have come to replace us. That's all it is. Uh, Oh, the warning. Speaking of children, these girls are very young. Their sister is from Mexico, and they blew up on YouTube about a decade ago, so they've been doing it for about 10 years, and I don't even know if they're 20 yet. But they're coming. The warning. They're on the Keep Me Fed tour. That's the new album. It's going to get them to the Agora, 
in a couple of weeks, September the 18th. A lot of buzz on these girls. So if you want to see them, I'll have tickets for you after the break. 35192 to text for anything.